So the big question is this, how do value-obsessed leaders ascend their business and life to world-class levels of effectiveness, even if they're inside a bureaucracy or starting from scratch with absolutely no capital? That is the question, and this podcast is going to bring you the answer. My name is Doug Utberg, and this is the Terminal Value Podcast. Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Michael DeLon here with us, and we are going to be talking about marketing misfires and how to avoid them. And, you know, marketing is actually a topic that's near and dear to my heart because my background's in finance. Uh, you know, I've also spent some time in like IT program management, and I worked in the technology industry for a long time. Uh, so, but the thing is that, right, you know, I, I've developed this really keen appreciation for A, how important marketing is, because uh, especially if you're going to do your own business, marketing is really important. Uh, B, how hard it is to do marketing well, and then C, how few people they are, there are who really know what they're doing. Uh, because at least my experience, uh, Michael, I'd love to get your feedback here. My experience is that um, a, a lot of people, they'll just burn money on marketing with no clue whether what they're doing is generating a net positive value or, or not. And the problem then yeah. is that you don't know whether to double down on it or to cut it and do something else. Uh, you know, that, 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 that's the frame that I'm coming at this with, um, you know, t tell me where my blind spots are at. Well, introduce yourself first and then tell me where my blind spots are at. <laughs> sure. Hey, Doug, thanks for having me on here. It's really a privilege. Um, so my background's in, in marketing and advertising, been doing it for 35 years, started out in Christian radio, did that for yeah. about nine years, uh, was a ministry, uh, ministry guy for about 10 years, helped build marriages yeah. and families, um, escape what, you know, my, my real job, the thing I've done for the last 10 years is, is help business owners build credibility in the eyes of their audience yeah. through publishing their own book. And then what I found out, Doug, is everybody think, here's the myth. You publish a book, the floodgates open and the world beats a path to your door. Doesn't happen, right? Yeah. And so I'd, I'd publish your book and you say, hey, Michael, great. There's my book. What, what, what do I do with it? Because I'm a tech guy. I don't yeah. really know marketing. And so I started putting together marketing systems and strategies and found, just like you said, a lot of business owners just throw money on the wall. They follow the next shiny object. They don't have a clue what's going on. So we've built a whole process around helping people create what we call a credibility game plan. Okay. Right? How do you take that? How do you understand marketing first? And then how do you put some pieces in place so that you can actually codify what you're doing and do what works for you and your business versus listening to the next guy who's out there with the next shiny object right yeah so well, well I, I was just I'm thinking because yeah you'd be like okay yeah let's turn on facebook ads be like all right i just burned ten thousand bucks in facebook ads what happened well you got a like a lot of likes for your page okay awesome what else happened <laughs> yeah like and, and likes don't put money in the bank buddy unless yeah, yeah, you know how exactly. to do it <laughs> yeah so it's, it's really trying and, and what i find is business owners just struggle with marketing because they they're not taught it right you've got an it yeah. background you're yeah. brilliant at IT. I don't know if but, I'd say brilliant, but I'd say well, okay. at least passable. <laughs> but how many? I, could, how many I, I, I like to think brilliant in finance, but the two can be related. There you go. There you go. Brilliant <laughs> in finance, but how many marketing classes did you take? Number one. Number two, most of what colleges teach in marketing is not what small business owners need. It's what big business owner does, right? If you try to follow yeah. Apple and do what Apple does, you're going to go broke. You'll go bankrupt. Yeah, exactly. Totally. So that's not what we do. We teach small business people how to market well through low cost, no cost strategy. So that's what we do. Yeah, well, and uh, I think the the some of the best advice I'd heard is that you know the way the, the way to think about your marketing is you send your dollars out into the wild and they come back with friends. <laughs> with you. <laughs> I love you know, that. Which, yeah. you know, which, which because, you know, and, and again, you know, this is this is kind of the direct marketing versus brand marketing, uh, you know, grudge match. It's been going on ever since David, David Ogilvy in the 50s. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and that, you know, direct marketing is usually most applicable to smaller businesses because you need to earn a, you know, a very short term return on investment. But of course, the thing is, if you structure your sales funnels correctly, structure your value ladder correctly so that your marketing can earn a, you know, say within a week, you know, like a, say a one to two week delay can basically recoup all of its costs. Then you have what's called a self-liquidating offer and you can essentially put an, you know, a, you know, not an unlimited amount, but a very significant right. amount in into marketing because you don't effectively don't have a marketing budget because you're recouping it all back in a short period of time. The problem is that the amount of testing required to get to a self-liquidating offer pushes almost everybody out of the game. 
It, well, it, it really does. It really does. And and the other flip side of that, where where we really work with business owners, is is one of the other myths in business is I yeah. need more leads. Okay, because when I talk with business owners, Doug, I say, okay, great, you need more leads. They're doing webinars or Facebook ads. Yeah. They get, hey, last last week, last month, I got twenty leads. Okay, eight of them booked appointments with me. We sold two. I need yeah. more leads. And I say, time out. You need more what about sales. This, what, what about the six that that opted yeah. in that you talked to? that didn't buy what about the 12 that didn't schedule them up what are you doing with yeah. them yeah and i get deer in the headlights going i need more leads yeah yeah wait wait wait, wait. yeah, what, yeah. What, let's what? always get leads. leads but let's make sure we have consistent follow-up because there's money in that gold mine of your database that 95 percent of business owners i talk with don't do anything with yeah, well, and per per particularly because, like, for example, let's say you drive traffic to a webinar, right? Okay, yeah. you are paying for everybody who goes to that webinar. Uh, you know, uh, you know. Okay, so it's like you know, everybody who opens your message and doesn't click, you're paying for them. Everybody yeah. who opens your message, click, doesn't subscribe, you're paying for them. Everybody who opens your message, clicks, subscribes, doesn't show up, you're paying for them. Everybody who opens your message, clicks, subscribes, shows up, and doesn't book an appointment, you're paying for them, right? You are paying for every single engagement along the way. And once you've paid for them once, and especially once you have their email address, um, you know, follow up relentlessly yep. until they either say, thanks, but no thanks, I'm out, or you get them on the phone. Yep. What we say is, is follow up, follow up, follow up until they buy or die, right? Yes. In, in, in a good loving, in a good loving way. Or unsubscribe, way, or unsubscribe. Or unsubscribe. Can, yeah, we'll, can't, yeah. can't spam laws are in place too. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, so, but, it, but it's understanding that, that your number one asset in your business is your list, your database, yes. getting them there and then having a, a pathway, right? Yeah. To help them. So, um, Let's talk about some of these misfires because it all yeah, it all yeah. ties together, yeah, right? Yeah. I really want to help your audience understand this. One of the biggest things, one of the biggest misfires is people not understanding the right mindset in marketing, okay? It's yeah, how yeah. the mind works. Marketing effects don't happen on Facebook or LinkedIn or webinars. They happen in the mind of your audience. How do they think about you, right? Yeah. If I, if I say, um, Doug, who is the first man to walk on the moon? Oh, well, you of course, would... that's Neil Armstrong. Okay, why is that? It's because in your mind, you have a ladder, a category ladder of men who have walked on the moon, and Neil's yeah. on the top. If uh -huh. I say, if I say overnight package delivery, usually FedEx comes to your usually, mind. Fe usually FedEx comes to mind. Yes. Because now they... I think the, the the cognitively difficult one would be like, who's the third person to walk on the moon? I actually don't know the answer to that. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> everybody knows I know who number two is because I'm researching. Yeah. But number three, who knows? And who cares, right? And one no, up. No idea. <laughs> so you've got to, as a business owner, you've got to you've got to look into the mind of your audience and say, how mm -hmm. do they think about me and my my category, my industry? Yeah. Okay. I work with a lot of attorneys, a lot of financial advisors. Yeah. They all look and sound the same. They're coffee beans, right? Pour coffee beans on the table. They smell yeah. like that. They look. No, you don't want to be a coffee. You have a unique message, but you have to understand how your audience thinks about you and your yeah. industry. To be able to influence them differently yeah that's that's really the number one misfire that's the thing we talk to our clients about first is you gotta understand how they think because we want to look at that category ladder around being a finance guy or yeah. being a whatever how do we tweak that because when you get yeah. that right that oh that clears the pathway right yeah so because you're probably not the first guy in your industry you are number three or four on the list yeah, well, and okay. and so that, that I think that that's the thing is that you know, and I mean, because it, if you really think about it that way, okay, you even if you say, "Hey, my product or service is unique," I go, "Okay, well, let for the sake of argument, let's say it is, even though it most likely isn't." Um, for the sake of argument, let's just say that you are unique, okay, but you are still competing for people's attention against everything else they can spend their time on. You're still competing for their money against everything else they can spend their money on. And so, even if you are quote unique, you're still competing against anything else they can do. That's right. You know, and but like well, and so you know, since you come from the uh, the church religious side, kind of right. one of the. Um, one of the ahas that I had uh, one time when I was reading a report was that, you know, when you were thinking about kind of how to market and promote, say, uh, you know, a church congregation, the, what, what the narrow people will think is they'll say, okay, you know, I'm competing against the Baptists and the Methodists. And it's like, no, you are not. You are competing against 
everything, every other use of people's time on Sunday morning. Oh my Absolutely. goodness, how am I going to do that? Well, that now you're asking the right question. That's right. Yeah, because it's <laughs> less about you and what it's it's more about yeah. them, right? Because yeah. you're competing yeah. against Sunday football on you know yeah. and kids soccer teams and, and all of that. Go, yeah. No, no, no. Here's here's and and that that probably leads into misfire number two is not having a what I call a 3D view of your yep. audience. Do you really understand your audience? When I talk, uh, Doug, do you understand your audience? You're like, well, yeah, I, I target, man, 35 <laughs> to 52. And it's like, okay, great. So does everybody else. Yeah. Do you understand your audience's 3D view? Their dreams, yep. their yep. drains, and their doubts. Okay. Do you know do you know your audience well enough Doug that you could write an entry into their journal uh-huh talking about what their dreams are what's holding them back what what are they doubtful of yeah. and, and, and what are those drains the things that I don't I don't understand technology I I don't want to spend I can't yeah. do you know well, your I, audience that well well and I think that's the thing is I think I do but until you get direct feedback, you don't know if you do. Yeah, Absolutely. I think I do. And that, that's where a lot of people are at. I'm, you know, I, I know what my show is targeted at. <laughs> I know the audience I'm targeted at. But as far as getting that direct feedback, uh, I have not gotten a statistically significant sample right. of feedback to where I can say I know that. And I think that's actually where most podcasts, frankly, and most businesses are yeah. too, no is that, yeah, you think you know your audience, but yeah, there's actually extreme value in actually knowing your audience, because I think the way that I would articulate that, you know, that principle probably in a, in a more earthy and uh, kind of less professional manner sure. would, you know, you know, would say it's like, right, you know, what, what would they crawl across broken glass to get? And what are they just deathly afraid of? Yeah, uh, you know, because then- those will tell you the, once you know the answer to those two questions, you know everything you need to market effectively. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and really the answers to both of those questions, Doug, are emotional answers. Yeah. And that's, we buy emotionally. Yeah. You look at most marketing, it's very logical. Well, and especially kind of in my domain, especially oh, yeah. in like the business to business domain. And so this is, this is kind of the net that I'm trying to crack right now, or that I'm working on cracking in the, in the B2B domain. The marketing is the most boring, bland stuff you have ever seen. And so what that means, at least kind of in the challenge that I'm going after, is that either A, there is an unlimited realm of extremely high margin opportunity, or I am going to hit my head against a brick wall that never budges. That's absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's it's so, well, and it's funny. That leads us to the next myth that I talk about is, is having an unclear or uncompelling message yeah when you don't understand your audience well enough then you're not going to craft a message that resonates that gets them to crawl across that bridge yeah over all that glass right and and what i find is is creating a message as a business owner for your own business is really hard okay i have mar i'm a marketing guy okay yeah. i've been doing marketing 35 years I've got two or three marketing coaches at any time looking at my business, yep. helping me see my business the way you, Doug, see me yeah, and my yeah. business. I have this unique ability. I can look into your business, Doug, and I can probably help you understand your message. So can half of your friends. Take them out to coffee. Yes, yes. As a business owner, we work in this silo and we can't see ourselves rightly, but we try to come up with these really cool messages that just fall yeah. flat. They fall over the bridge. Yeah, well, and I think then that, that that's one one of the things that at least that I I have a lot of things that I think about, which is probably probably why I appear somewhat I, why I feel schizophrenic sometimes. Yes. Uh, is that, but like one of the things that I think I think about a lot is okay, blind spots. What are your blind spots? And the definition of a blind spot is something that you can't and don't see. And so by that very definition, I cannot know what my blind spots are because. Totally. That's why they're blind spots. And you're <laughs> if right. I knew what it was, it wouldn't be a blind spot. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why you need people looking into you. You need, you know, small, we have, we have group coaching programs that we take mm -hmm. people through because you work with peers, you, you get insight and you get those aha moments because other people are going to say, no, what yeah. about this? Have you thought about that? Because you'll say something that you, because you know your stuff so well. You're just going to spout something off and everybody else is going to say, what, 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 what? You yeah, do that? Right, what? Make that your message because that's what I want. Yeah, but well, you'll, and, you'll... yeah, and 
and and if you take it to to a next to to the next level, which I think this is very time intensive, but of course, you know, if you're going to really do it right, what you really need to do is you need to understand that your customer base is not one group of people. It's probably it is a it is a collection of people that all have different three D profiles, yes. and what you really need to do is figure out where are all of those people at from a marketing media target perspective, how do you find them? How do you segment them? And then how do you create a message that is custom for each of them? Right. Yeah. And, and many times at, at one level, you could have, let's say four or five different of those, of those markets, right? Yeah. When you dive down deep, what you find is most of them have very similar dreams, dreams, and doubts, which yeah. allows you to take your message and then customize it to financial advisors or attorneys or finance, yeah, whatever. Exactly. But the core, they're all really after the same thing, right? Then you've got multiple um, lead mechanisms out there that are driving to a, a specific funnel yeah, that yeah. gets them into a funnel that speaks their language and then drops them into whatever you're offering. So it, I, the other place that business owners really misfire is they make marketing too complex. Yeah. You've got to simplify your marketing through systems yeah. Through having really one clear message that then you can iterate to different markets. Okay, so like our, yeah. for, for our book publishing company, create your book without writing a word. I that, could work, be a, that could be its own podcast. <laughs> it totally could be, right? But I know my audience, money's not their biggest issue. It's time because they're busy. Yeah. Great. I can take that message now out to high, high, high level financial advisors, yeah. chiropractors, yeah. dentists, you know, and, and then craft the landing page to speak their language. Yeah. But the message is the same because I know my audience. Yeah. Do you know your audience that well to craft a clear, compelling message to your audience that gets them to take a step in your direction? That's where business owners struggle because they're experts at their thing. Dan Kennedy followed him yeah. for years. He's got, a, he's got a quote on my wall over here. It's more important to be a master marketer than to be a master at your craft. Well, and uh, so, and I, I'm I'm also a big fan of Dan Kennedy. Okay. I think uh, right. one of the ways that I heard that same idea is that there is very little money in being good at what you do. There's Absolutely. an unlimited amount of money in being good at marketing what you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's why I love what I get to do with helping business owners through, through what I call credibility marketing, yeah. right? Taking the story that's uniquely dug. And, and telling that in such a compelling way that people bond with you, that your ideal yeah. audience bonds with you, and then they connect with you at the heart level. And yeah. that's where I see a lot of advertising just and marketing just really falling flat. It, mm -hmm. It's not at the heart level. I, we've all had, right, Dan, Dan Kenny, you got to know, like, and trust. Yeah, yeah, you do. But you've got to believe as well. I've got to believe. I've got to res my, – my message has to resonate with you. Yeah. When it does, yeah. a connection's made that says, okay, this is cool. You know, this is the fifth misfire, Doug, um, <laughs> that I didn't even talk about, but it's going to your website. Most websites, when I go there, A, they're brochures. Yeah. B, the call to action most time on a website is schedule a call with me. No, 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 no. Have it there, but you need to have an easier step because these people are still researching Give them a free yeah. report, a lead generation magnet, a video to watch, a, a something, yeah, something on your list. Nurture them, build that relationship, then always have the call to action to schedule a call when they're ready. But I think yeah. we're leaving money on the table by saying, well, schedule a call with me. I am not ready for that. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, ex exactly. <laughs> well, and I think this is where uh, the idea of a low threshold offer, and uh, at least what, what what I found right now, because I think you know that's another Dan Kennedy idea, is to have a, a very low resistance, low threshold offer. And uh, at least uh, one of the things that I've, that I've discovered is that you actually need to have put quite a bit into that low threshold offer in order to get something that actually converts. It, you, it's actually remarkable. It, it's becoming remarkably difficult to give away a free report. <laughs> You can drive traffic to a page and you could say free report, free, you know, all kinds of stuff. And you'll get just disturbingly low conversion rates. And right. it's like, I can't even give something away for free. What's going right. on here? Yeah, we've been so inundated, but and, and everybody's so jaded, right? Yeah. Here, here, here's something I tell a lot of my clients is instead of a free report or something like that, have a video of you, like a two or three minute video yeah. of you. Now, I love video. Not everybody loves video, but I do. You'd be yeah. great on yeah. video. 
on their homepage where you're just talking with them, saying, hey, thanks, thanks for coming by. Here's who we are. Here's who we help. Below this video are three or four ways that, that you know, some free resources, some different things. When you're ready, take that next step, but feel free. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's totally different than anything else they've ever seen. And you're, it, it helps you build a relationship. So that's a simple way to welcome somebody. Yeah. And then in your email funnels, if you're good at video, use more videos. Use, it, it's, it's taking us out of this is the way it should be done because this is the way it's always been done to go and uh -huh. no, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to connect with you, right? And yeah. especially yeah. in our day and age now, I mean, 95% of my stuff is done on Zoom. Yes. Video. Yeah, that's, that's life. That's life. Why, why wouldn't I do that early? in the process yeah to start do you do you really like me am i a good fit here's who i am wow i got all right well so how's this sound i'm i'm gonna uh you know i'm you know i'm gonna role play as your spectacle as your skeptical client oh, no, michael that sounds like so much work who has time for all that yeah great great do you, do you know how to use zoom <laughs> right it, it's not hard you, you you do a zoom recording you put it on vimeo you take the html and you slam it on your website you should probably have somebody doing that for you but yeah. i know a lot of small business owners still do it all Again, simplifying your website so you can make simple changes, but it doesn't, this is not hiring some company yeah. to do this professional looking, it's, dude, this is my office. This is what you get on every video. Yeah. Right? If you don't yeah. like yeah. me, if you think I'm unprofessional, great. I don't want to work with you, but if well, you're going to well, connect with me, let's yeah. have a conversation because I'm well, just, this is me. Yeah. Well, and like, for example, um, you know, what you're looking at right here, this, this is a virtual background, big shocker. Right. And yeah. so it's like, you know, you know, even if you want to be quote professional, it's not that hard. Well, so for, you know, for the benefit of everybody who's watching here, let me go, uh, let me un, un virtual my background. And there you go. yeah, see, Oh, look, hey, you know, yeah. there's my office. It's not that interesting, but Oh, what? Let's re virtual. Okay. There you now go. We're back. It's <laughs> you not, know, yeah, it's, it's not, not that not hard. Concerned. It's not, and and you notice my you know mine's not virtual right this is, yeah. this is my, I work out of my garage attic right I that built this thing beautiful and but it connects with people and yeah at, and here's here's where my business really changed about three and a half years ago is Doug when I realized I had to stop trying to be what everybody said I was supposed to be uh -huh. and I became and I became Michael and I just said well, you know what I work with attorneys you know stuff shirts attorneys and financial yeah. advice, really professional they're in suits I'm not. I used to wear a jacket and a tie. And it's like, yeah, that's not me. This yeah. is who I am. And well, and and I think there's, uh, and you know, I'm getting a little bit off topic, but that's, that's okay. what I, I think I, I like. Well, one of the one of the things I used to I used to do with my team, for, uh, like on a, on a regular basis, is you know, I, you know, because some people are like, okay, you know what, no tangents, none at all, and I'd say, okay, well, here's what we're gonna do: go on any tangent you want, uh, if it's thirty seconds or less, and if it's really interesting, we'll spend two minutes on it. Uh, there th you go. Then we'll go back on topic. I love it. Um, and so, all right, so I'm going to start with uh, 30 seconds. And if we think it's interesting, we can give it a couple of minutes. Sounds great. Right, so, but anyway, the tangent that I'm thinking of here, or something you said that really kind of struck a chord in my head, is that I think that one of the things that you that you just discovered is how to transcend the need for external validation, which I think is where a lot of employees and entrepreneurs run into problems is because you know, with, with, you know, because the need for human for external validation, it's a it, it's it's endemic to everybody, e everyone has it at some degree or another. But if you can't find a way to overcome or transcend that, then no matter what you do, you're never going to be happy, because there's always going to be a next level that you're not at. Um, and, you know, and now I think it's now I, I with that, I should say that nobody ever really gets over a need for external validation. Okay. But if you can understand that you have it and then, you know, you know, but that and then learn how to mentally, at least for the most part, get past it. That's really the only way that you that's the way that you're going to really be be happy with your journey wherever it takes you, as opposed to all, you know, never really being happy, no matter how high, no matter how far you go. That's right. At yeah. least that's at least that, that that's my observation is because you know I read account after account of people who have achieved just amazing things and they're like okay yeah but you know there's always the next thing or it's like hey I just had a, a seminar where there were ten thousand people there okay well yeah but now we need to do the back end okay well but you know but now I need to do the next call I just have a book and all right I need to do book funnel and like you know it, everything begets something else and you you just people that they just run and like are you know just you know just just yeah. you know, but no matter what they do they never feel like they're getting where they need to be. That's right. Yeah. And that that's really an internal thing in, in this yeah. piece, right? Yeah. I, I've, got, I've, got a, 
I've got a phrase that I use, Doug, that I, I want to live in a way that I'm always content, yeah. but not complacent. Yes. I want to be happy with the success I have. Um, I think it was a uh, strategic coach, Dan Sullivan. Yeah. I heard yeah. him years ago. He said, never measure forward, always measure back, which means you need to pause and look back and say, wow, I just filled a 10,000 seat arena yeah. with, and they came to see me. And that was great. Awesome. How can I impact more people? versus yeah. I've got to go more. That wasn't good enough. No, 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 yeah. no. It's also important as entrepreneurs, it, it's a lonely world, right? To yeah. have a, a group, small group of people around you that you can talk with who, who I just came off of a, a, ma a mastermind meeting right before this podcast. Uh -huh. And one of the guys shared something and three others of us chimed in and said, you know, I'm dealing with the same yeah. Yeah. thing. And when he shared it the first time, you could tell he was like trepidation, like I'm the only guy doing this. It's like, no, 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 no. Well, We're well, all in he, this together. He, and we all have those mind games. Yeah. They go, no, let's, let's, let's gather mean, together and yeah. encourage you. Kind of like coming around that, thinking about like, okay, somebody says, what do you do? Okay, there's not a one sentence answer to that question or, 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 or the one that, again, people, you know, people mean this, mean this nicely. People say, how's your job going? And I'm like, yeah. okay, well, uh, Fine. Oh, what do you say? You just say fine. I mean, yeah. and so, but that's the thing is, you, and those are both very, you know, th th those are, are they're, they're very innocent uh, questions that express interest. But what they do is they call out a, you know, they, they, they call it a, a quote normal that doesn't apply to either of us and doesn't apply to any entrepreneur. Absolutely. And, but it, it creates that anxiety because on the one hand, right, you know, you don't want to like unleash on them and say, I don't have a job. I'm my own boss. And yeah, that, that, that's just a way to have no friends in the world. That's right. But other hand you're like okay wow i'm just really getting another reminder of the fact that i people just really don't get it with me <laughs> I, I, yeah no i've got i've got people at church i've got business owners at church who i categorize as not entrepreneurs like us yeah and then i've got people like us right yes. so i i surround myself with people like us because yeah. Yeah. If, if i start talking to marketing or business struggles or different things you get it but if i go to the guy who runs an accounting firm for the last 40 years and he just does tax returns he doesn't get it. And yeah. so I've got to surround myself with people, like-minded people who are all on this journey together to go, you know what, Doug, I want to make sure that when I look in the mirror in the morning and in the mirror at night, I like the guy in the mirror. Yeah. Now, yeah. There's always struggles. There's always these phantoms, right? And, and we all struggle with self-doubt. Everybody. I'm sure Tony yes, Robbins yes. struggles with self-doubt, right? So get used to it. Say, yeah, that's it. Don't let it paralyze you. Take the next step and have somebody you can reach out to and say, hey, Doug, man, dude, we I need a pep talk, dude. I, I just really, life really sucks right now. Help me out. And, or, or, or talk to clients, you know? I'm always surprised that we run these coaching programs and, and our clients give us feedback and they're like, man, that was so good. So what you said was so great. And I'm sitting here going, what did I say, right? Yeah. It comes so naturally, but our audience sees us in a different light. Learn to see yourself that way because that, it just builds that self-confidence. Going, You know, yeah. I really do. When I stay in my lane, Doug, of credibility mm -hmm. marketing, um, I'm, re I'm just really good, but yeah. when I get outside of that lane, I crash and burn. <laughs> so I've learned to stay in my lane. Yeah. I do four things. Well, in life, that's all I do Four things. I'm, I'm wicked good at these four things, Doug. Okay. Outside of those four things, I'm mediocre at best. So Out. everybody has yeah. their thing or their things. Yep. See what you do best, build a team around you to, to do the rest. Not exactly. Uh, exactly. Well, uh, hey, this has been a wonderful conversation. Uh, so uh, to, uh, give us just like, you know, one or two more uh, more points to think about, uh, take home, and then uh, let everybody know where they can learn more, like whether they can either uh, sign up for your list, kind of get, you know, I don't know if you have any eBooks or if they want to, you know, just want to learn more about Michael. Yep. Great. Um, so real quick on that, a couple of things. Um, learn, we, we built something. So I talk about credibility marketing a lot, right? Yeah. What is credibility? I asked a lot of people and they're like, well, it's this thing. Nobody really can define it or understand it. So we created, we discovered yeah. it. We created a calculator that will give you a credibility score, zero to 100. It takes less than five minutes and you'll find it okay. at our website. It's paperbackexpert.com. Nice. Go to my website, take the credibility calculator. You'll get your credibility score. And then after that, there are five videos. They say, okay, here's how you improve your credibility score in the eyes of your audience. Okay. Read everybody paperbackexpert.com. From there, you can find me. You can connect with me. You can do all kinds of things with me. Got it. One of, one of the, the next things to add, keep adding value here is, is find, find your story. Mm -hmm. Okay. My story, my business began on the day I escaped from prison, Doug. Okay. 
Now, it wasn't a literal prison. It was an emotional yeah. prison because I was in a job that I hated for two years. When I got out of that job, everything changed for me, right? Yeah. Now, that's a story that I tell a lot because it resonates with my audience. Yeah. A lot of them have been in those jobs. Right? You have a story, Doug. Every business owner has a story of Everybody's how did they story, get to yeah. there? Yeah. But what I find is they don't tell that story because they get stuck in, well, this is how marketing should be done. Yeah. Who are you on that? I want to know who you are and I want to connect with you. You know, we, we were foster parents for eight years. I have two adopted daughters from that. I've got two biological sons. I've been married for 32 years. I tell those things because that one of those things is going to connect with you. You're like, yeah. oh, you did foster care too. And guess what? I just reached your heart. Now we can have yeah. an open conversation. I'm in a better position. I don't, I don't do sales calls, Doug. I do credibility conversations and I start them off saying, here's the framework. How can I yeah, help yeah. you? If, if we're a good fit, I'll share with the programs and the, and the ways I can help you. If I'm not a good fit and I can refer you to somebody, I'm happy to do that. Here, dude, it takes all the pressure off. Yeah, exactly. And I still make sales because people yeah. connect with me and they need what I, so yeah. be yourself, tell your story. And if you don't, if you're sitting there listening to this going, but how do I find my story? Take a friend out to coffee. And have right. them just ask you questions about your background. How'd you grow up? What was your family like? What were your hobbies? What are your hobbies now? Why do you do that? Why do you live where you live? Yeah. What, what got you into it? And, and record it on your iPhone or whatever you on your computer. Yeah. Record it. And what you're going to find, there, there are themes that start coming out. And those themes are unique to you. Start talking about yeah. that in your marketing. Going back to what you said about your marketing yeah. early on. Yeah. That's how you start being different from everybody else. It'll well, attract and, people to you. And I think they, the thing that's really important, because the thing that I would almost, I would add on to what you're saying is that, and also don't feel like you need to have all of that dial it in before you start. Just start with something oh, and yeah. then augment it as you go. Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't take, I mean, never perfect, right? One, a business yeah. owner, I know a dear friend of mine, he's been in business for, for years. Um, he said, Michael, I, I've got a rule. When, it get, when anything gets 70% finished, I pulled the trigger. And yeah. then we figure the rest of it out as it goes. I said, that is great concept, right? So just get it going because yeah. procrastination is not going to get you anywhere except that. Uh, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, I don't think I can add on that anymore. So uh, I'm going to say, everybody, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time, Michael. You're welcome. And uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Please feel free to visit me online at www.terminalvalue.biz where you can subscribe, find me on social, and then we can connect and just keep the conversation going. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a wonderful day. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Light, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.